Hey, this is Krista from Magnolia Ridge Farm and Gardens, and uh, welcome to my channel. I am going to do a, a week five pantry review tonight, and it's going to be a little bit different because what I want to do is kind of go over a recap of January and then go into some things for February. So in January, the only things I purchased were things for the kids' lunch that I keep around to make it a little bit easier. So things like um, chips and drinks, I did purchase those things. And then um, I did purchase some cookies. I had planned on making some cookies for the month, but I ran into this clearance sale at Big Lots and they had like Chips Ahoy and everything for a dollar, like big packages of them. And they were good until uh, later this year. So I went ahead and bought those just to save me some time. And then, of course, the dairy, because we do not have a dairy option. So the milk cheese, sour cream, and I think that was it that I used this month. So not a lot of things. And my grocery budget, honestly, was amazing this month. Even with purchasing those few things, you know, it was like maybe $40 here, $40 there. It was not bad at all. So um, towards the end of the month, when I did the chicken soup, I did several pots for sick friends, um, I ran out of my onions, carrots, and celery. And that is something that I use a lot of in the winter, and I also put it in my kids' lunches. So I make like big toe boxes and put fresh carrots and celery in there, and that's like one of the fresh things that they will eat for snacks and stuff. So when I ran out of that, I did go and get more, um, and I got more onion because I did not have any onion saved from last year. We had used all of our onions fresh and did not have but just a tiny bit of dehydrated caramelized onion left in a jar. So I did go get a bag of onions just because I use that nonstop. So that was a little bit of a bummer, but I did kind of break the rule for that. Just, well, not really the rule, but um, I did go get those things just because I used them up. You know, I probably could have stretched them a few more weeks had I not cooked for friends, but cooking for friends and helping people out is more of a priority than sticking to a no purchase um, challenge for YouTube. So, <laughs> but here's what I learned from all this. So lessons I've learned in January that I was actually really surprised is how much root vegetables I do use, especially during the winter when we're not getting fresh things from the garden. So what that tells me is this coming year, I need to plant a lot more onion, which I have already started and I have already started a lot more onion than I normally do. I need to plant way more carrots and I need to grow celery. Celery is not something I've ever done before. So we're gonna change all that this year. I also need a dairy option. Um, we do a lot of cheese and stuff, and a dairy option actually is in our um, kind of three-year plan, which we're already in, you know, at least a year into that three-year plan. <laughs> um, so hopefully towards the end of this year, we will start that project. And, you know, we only have um, two and a quarter acres, so we do not have enough here to support a milk cow. Now, we could put a milk cow at my parents' house, but I'm not close enough to go milk it every day. Um, they have beef cows. They do all that. I don't really do anything with the cows. Uh, my sister has goats. I don't really do anything with the goats, but out of those options, I think we are gonna do goats here just because we have such a small property. And my neighbor, who is my cousin, is uh, super sweet and gonna let me fence in part of um, his property in the back that's all woods and it's connected to our woods right by our barn. So they will have a lot more room um, to move around and things like that. So they will have um, an, a really nice paddock. So we are aiming for goats so, so that we have a dairy option, but that's not, we're not ready for them yet. So that's kind of like towards the end of the year, maybe into next year before we even approach that, I think. <laughs> so Anyway, another lesson I've learned is when we cut out the convenience food, the pre-made foods, the going out to eat, which, you know, we were guilty of breaking that a few times um, just because our lives got a little hectic. So when we break that or 
excuse me, when we get out of that habit, we go towards heavily carbs, like breads and pastas because they're quick and they're easy. So I did really good with some meals, and but I noticed we were heavier on the root vegetables and the pastas when we didn't have fresh foods anymore. So the first week or two, we were okay because we still had like some fresh vegetables and things in the freezer or in the refrigerator left over from New Year's and stuff. But when all of that ran out and we were using stored foods and things, we went heavy on the vegetables, the pastas, and the breads. Um, so that's something that I need to correct in how I store foods and also in having ready-made freezer meals, um, which I'm not the greatest at. I go through phases where I have them and then if I'll run out and then not do any for, you know, a month or two, which usually hits during the summer and we have fresh foods coming in. So it's easy to just grab a tomato sandwich or something if I don't have anything ready. So I've got to, I've got to, ugh. I've got to get a little bit better about that. So those are lessons that the pantry challenge in January has taught me. And I think they are very valuable lessons. Let's talk about weight loss because, you know, that's one of the things that I want to do on this journey. Now that we are getting back into a clean eating, self-sustaining, um, you know, strictly kind of farm way of life and trying to get away from the life we lived pre-pandemic where everything was, you know, fast food, convenience and stuff like that and trying to get this weight back off that I gained during 2020. Um, I initially lost a little bit of weight. Um, I posted that, I think it was week one, I lost a little bit of weight and I was super excited about that. But um, while it stayed off for a week or two, it started creeping back on when we started getting those heavier bread and pasta and carb meals. Um, and then of course we ate out a couple times as well. So it came back. So I'm back to square one. So I need to work on that as well. So where are we at starting February, week five? We are starting with, I went to Costco today. <laughs> I know, but I needed uh, a lot of things that were not food related. So I went for things like toilet paper, paper towels, trash bags, um, things that we buy in bulk every few months. And that's what I stuck to. Um, I did buy a box of chips because they're cheaper buying them in bulk there for the kids' lunches, the pre-made, pre-bag chips. I did buy those. And the one thing I did splurge on was a bag of salad because we're basically craving it and I went and looked through but what got me was how expensive they are now and when I'm looking at the ingredients of the salads I'm sitting there thinking wow they're really heavy in cabbage they're really heavy in kale they're really heavy in you know romaine lettuce and I can grow all of that and you know cranberries and um what is it dehydrated cranberries and pumpkin seeds or sunflower seeds. Well, I have all that stuff. So I want to play around with doing some indoor, more indoor growing next winter so that I can have more leafy greens. And my husband and I have actually been developing a um, 3D hydroponic system. So, or 3D printed. So we're about to start that and I will take you along for that journey. So anyway, um, I did really good other than that. Other than that one splurge of a bag salad just so we would have something fresh. And we're going to eat that tonight with leftover chicken. I looked at other foods that we would typically buy when we go in there. Like the muffins and the croissants and the breads. And things like that that we would just usually splurge on every few months when we go in there because then the kids would eat a muffin for breakfast because that, you know, they have those really big ones and stuff. And I'm looking at them going, I don't know, eight muffins for $7.99. That's a dollar a muffin. I don't know that that's really a good deal to me anymore now that I'm cooking everything from scratch because I can cook. I am a good cook. It's just time. But the pantry challenge has helped me get a little bit more organized in time. You know, I have failed in a few times, but I'm getting better. 
and I just, I'm looking at food differently at the store and I'm like, the value for me to get those, knowing they have all the preservatives in them and looking at that ingredient list, I'm like, I can't, I can't do it. I couldn't buy them. So this has helped me another lesson learned. It's helping me to look at food differently and that may help me both long-term health wise and weight wise, as well as my family and get more organized and schedule myself to improve on having these better foods available to counteract the busy work weeks. Um, I also did one more purchase this past week and that was pasta because like I said we went through pasta pretty heavy and I do not make homemade pasta. It is something I need to get into but it is not something I do so it's not something I really wanted to tackle uh, right now among tackling everything else with you know, cooking homemade, scheduling, cleaning out the freezer. I've got canning projects, gardening starts to take off. So doing homemade pasta right this second was not something I wanted to get into. And when I saw a really good sale with inflation and increasing prices, I went ahead and hopped on it. But what I am aimed to do is I have put it to the side so that I try not to use it through the rest of this challenge. So I do have some pasta left over still. So I'm gonna focus on using that when I need it through the rest of this challenge and not what I had. But I'm not trying to empty out my pantry to no food whatsoever. So, you know, at the beginning of March, I have to go restock a whole lot of stuff. So I went ahead and grabbed that sale and just put them to the side. So let's talk about what we're going to do for the pantry challenge in February. I'm going to go finish up that main freezer that we started with, the old freezer that had all the older food in it. It has come such a long way and I should go down there and film it, but it is doing great and I can see the end of the light at the tunnel or the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> And so my goal is to get that freezer completely cleaned out so I can get it defrosted and we can start fresh and get everything organized and start in the drawer freezer at the bottom of the refrigerator because it has some things in the very bottom. I don't know what all's down in there. So we're going to start on that one in February as well. And then continue to clean out some old pantry items. We've gotten through quite a bit um, and done a little bit of organizing so I know what's in the back things like that, but there's some things that I do want to get cleaned out still. Another thing that I'm going to be working on in February is um, some canning projects so that I have a little bit more of variety with ease. So we went through like all of our homemade tomato soup that I did. We are on our last jar of spaghetti sauce. So I have plenty of cans of just plain tomatoes, but what I need to do is go ahead and pull those and make soup out of them or sauce and then you know recan them or freeze them or whatever so um that's what i'm going to work on in february as well as a few freezer meals and uh, just finishing up some of these old winter canning projects that need to get done so let's do week five recap of food and it was pretty simple i'm just going to kind of blow through it here because i think i've only got like one video to show you um so we had um sunday night chicken rice with uh, gravy on top and canned green beans. On Monday, I made up grit casserole and I put it in two separate pans. So we ate one and then put one in the refrigerator and we had that for breakfast through the week and I topped it with the homemade sausage, turkey sausage that I made. So for the rest of the week, we ate grit casserole with the sausage on top and we finished off the egg bite muffin things that I had made. We haven't really touched the scrambled egg squares, but the muffins were a hit and um, they with the pancake batter and they went really fast. So I need to make more of those. And then we did uh, a chicken pot pie, but I didn't have time to do a crust. So I just did the pie filling and then we topped it with a biscuit. And so I'm gonna insert that one here. So we're just adding the onion to the butter, then the celery, and then a couple carrots diced. These are blush magnolia sweet peas that I shelled from the garden and froze. See some broccoli florets from the garden that are frozen because my kids actually do like broccoli. And then seasoning this layer. 
and letting that all blend together. After the peas and broccoli are thawed out, we add the chicken back in, the cooked chicken. And then a jar of home canned potatoes. And then seasoning this layer again. Then I'm doing a quick roux and I'm adding some seasonings and herbs to the roux. You should always season every layer lightly versus trying to season all at once. Once the roux is done, I'm adding it to my vegetables and chicken, blending it up and making sure I don't need to add any more spices. And then it's just a quick serve and top with biscuits since we did not do a crust. All right, so then Wednesday night, we had spaghetti. And this is, spaghetti is like my absolute go-to when I am in a pinch and I need a quick dinner. And Wednesday night was one of those nights for me. So hamburger from the old freezer, uh, one of the last jars of homemade spaghetti sauce, pasta noodles, quick and easy. And then Thursday night, I actually had uh, both of us worked really late and so my mom was babysitting for us and she made pancakes and bacon with the leftover bacon from the corn chowder. So she made that up and then the next night I used the leftover bacon that she had cooked and made creamed corn from a jar of corn and homemade biscuits again. So Saturday night, which was our last night, which was last night, <laughs> um, my husband and I and my mom actually had a big event to go to. I was doing a homesteading speech at a um, political rally. And um, I do not have clips from that because we weren't allowed to uh, film or take pictures. I can post a quick picture of me doing a selfie uh, right before the event. But... Um, I don't have anything for that. So my dad actually was babysitting my kids and he doesn't typically babysit the kids. So I tried to make it super easy for him and I made a big pot of the chicken stew because I knew the kids would eat it. I knew he would eat it and it could sit on the stove when I left and um, be really easy to just be warm for them. So my dad kind of sat in my living room and watched Yellowstone, caught up on the Yellowstone episodes. <laughs> And they hung out with my kids while, um, which they stayed mostly in their rooms, you know, watching movies and stuff. But that was what we did last night was the big pot of chicken stew, which is like one of my just go-to meals this winter. Um, anyway, so that's it. That was really um, all that we did this week to kick off February. That is a full recap of January now that I've had time to kind of end it and process it and figure out what I'm doing going into February. So I am enjoying it. I'm glad to be going into another month of it with the lessons I have learned. And I'm looking forward to recapping this whole challenge with you guys and um, getting more gardening content and more recipes up. So this is going to be a really heavy week this week because I'm not working as much. I don't have as many events this week. So I'm excited to do it. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you later.